Okay, so thank you, very, thank you very much, Geraldine. Um, uh, good evening to uh, fellow citizens. Uh, good evening to Zimbabweans compatriots who are uh, listening. I know that uh, there are many uh, who are not necessarily citizens, who are not necessarily uh, members of um, uh, our beautiful uh, uh, movement. Um, so I, I think I'll just go on into what I want to say. I've been asked to speak on um, diaspora remittances uh, without uh, human rights. Uh, one way of rewording this uh, uh, subject is basically uh, taxation without uh, a representation, uh, taxation without uh, accountability. Uh, the diaspora community has become such a large contributor to Zimbabwe's uh, gross domestic uh, product. As I'm talking to you right now, for 2021, the diaspora contributions were 1.4 billion uh, US dollars. In 2020, they were around 1.2 a billion dollars and in the last five years they've averaged a, a billion uh, us dollars uh, and now if you want to see uh, the scope of these uh, contributions compare diaspora remittances to overseas development assistance or if you want to see uh, the scope of these uh, contributions compare diaspora remittances to overseas development assistance or aid or compare that to uh, to foreign direct uh, investment. So I'll start with overseas development assistance. Uh, overseas development assistance, that is to say a donor aid, uh, largely coming from the United States of America, the United Kingdom, through TF DFID, now disbanded uh, the European uh, Union. Uh, these are the biggest contributors to uh, Zimbabwean ODA, overseas development assistance. Uh, in 2021, uh, it was around US uh, 600 uh, million dollars and that has been the figure the average figure uh, in the uh, since uh, 2014 uh, which is lower than the figure that of, of that same figure during the time of the gnu which was around a billion uh, us uh, dollars uh, foreign direct investment uh, coming into them here i'm talking about uh, foreign direct investment uh, uh, accounted for uh, by answer the united nations uh, commission for trade and development based in Geneva. Uh, they've got an official website uh, that anyone can go and uh, check. Our, our foreign direct investment is actually average a US uh, $200 million annually uh, in the last uh, five years. Uh, of course, uh, I acknowledge that there are these illicit or shadowy uh, foreign direct investment coming particularly from China, which is dubious, which is not legitimate. We've seen the disastrous consequences uh, in the invasions of our mountains, our graves, places like uh, like Inde, uh, places like uh, Motoko, uh, places like uh, Uzumba Marabwe, where the Chinese are literally going into grave sites uh, to dig for whatever they can uh, do. Uh, but the fact of the matter then is that uh, foreign direct investment has been uh, 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 five times uh, lower uh, than diaspora remittances. Overseas development assistance has been lower than diaspora uh, remittances. Uh, and, and so diaspora remittances have become a major uh, contributor to the GDP, as I said. But I want to come to a fourth uh, a, a comparative uh, matrix, uh, which is uh, Zimbabwe's current account and our balance of payment position. Here, I'm talking about uh, the relationship between our exports and our imports. So Zimbabwe roughly has uh, exports of around 5 billion US dollars. This is what we sell outside uh, Zimbabwe. Uh, uh, our imports, that which we bring in, is roughly around, uh, uh, around uh, 6 billion dollars. That means the net deficit is about a billion dollars. So the current account is in deficit. However, what Mutuli Ngube has done in the past three years is to compress demand, is to compress uh, imports. Uh, and, and that has been done to create the fiction uh, of, a, of, a, of, a, of, a, of a country with a positive balance of payment position with the country of these imports just to show the myth of Mutuli's claimed uh, current account, positive current account position. We've got fuel. Uh, Zimbabwe doesn't produce fuel. So we import fuel in a normal year of about a billion uh, US dollars. But the last two years have not been up in normal because our capacity to produce 
uh, uh, our capacity to produce our own energy has been limited. Wange 1 to 6 has basically uh, collapsed, uh, leaving production of energy uh, to, to Kariba. Kariba is only 700 megawatts when we require around 1,500 to 2,000 megawatts. So when there is no electricity now, people tend to diesel. People tend to petrol generators. So the increase, the, 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 the uh, uh, depreciation and decarbon of Zimbabwe's energy output has meant a corresponding increase in the Zimbabwe's demands for fuel imports for hydrocarbons. So, the, so hydrocarbons are essentially around two billion uh, US dollars. Then you've got electricity. We've been importing electricity uh, from HBC, that's Kabora Pasa in Mozambique, ESCOM in 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 in, in, in South Africa. Again, uh, that figure is close to. Uh, to uh, billion dollars. Then you've got, uh, uh, you know, food, foodstuffs, essential uh, foodstuffs. Then you've got medicines, essential medicines. Then you've got agricultural imports, particularly uh, ammonium nitrate, particularly phosphates. Uh, we used to have several chemicals which used to produce ammonium nitrate. But as all of you uh, may know, uh, that is shut down. And of course, you know that command agriculture is consuming uh, over 10 billion US dollars. And a large part of that is actually going to, uh, to ammonium nitrate. So the bottom line is that the imports whose demand is inelastic, whether we like it or not, as long as there's a state called Zimbabwe, it will require fuel, it will require drugs. They are essentially four billion US dollars. Then, of course, you have got trinkets. They love their whisks, they love their vehicles, they love they love transport, they love uh, their Gucci's and so forth. That's probably another two billion US dollars. So you're you're paid to six billion dollars. But even assuming Mutuling Ube's figures are correct, then and, and we've been operating on a regime of uh, import suppression. It would still be the negative, the negative, sorry, the positive uh, uh, current account position will be around 200 million, will be around 300 million. That means that Zimbabwe's diaspora remittances are much, much more than what it is getting from its trade in net terms when you compare imports and exports. What does this mean to this debate? What it means to this debate is that the diaspora community is now occupying a major structural position in Zimbabwe's uh, uh, economy. Therefore, therefore, it also requires, it also demands that the government of the day, the authorities, must also give corresponding a sufficient weighty importance, and regrettably, uh, this is not a, this is not a, a, this is not happening. And I would like to submit that this is actually contra uh, to the constitution. This is actually against the, the constitution. The constitution in chapter three devotes an entire chapter to the right of citizens, and so you will find uh, you will find the rights that are given uh, to, 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 to citizens in that uh, 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 section, in that chapter of the constitution. Part of that right includes the entitlement to, to a passport, the entitlement to identity documents. Those are not a, a, a privilege. Another right given to a citizen is the right codified in section 67 of the constitution. And section 67 of the constitution says that every citizen is entitled to political rights, which include the right to vote, which include the right to form a political party, to join a political, uh, to join a political party, to support a cause, uh, and, and so forth. It's a very important uh, provision which we planned uh, from the South African Constitution. Now, notice that, notice that Section Three, so Chapter Chapter Three of the Constitution and Section Sixty Seven of the Constitution define citizenship and the bestow rights on citizenship irrespective of their residence. So the rights granted to citizens in terms of their constitution are not restricted in terms of enjoyment to their residence. In other words, they are not qualified because you are, you are staying in Botswana. They are not qualified because you are staying in South Africa. They are not qualified because you are staying in the United Kingdom, like many of you on this platform. I've seen uh, my relatives, my nephews, and my nieces. They are not qualified because you are, you are in the United States of America. They are not qualified because you are in Beijing. They are not qualified... Uh, because you are in India, they are not qualified because you are in Deben uh, or, 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 or or Mauritius and so forth. That means that any interpretation of the law that restricts the enjoyment of citizens' rights based on the location of the citizen is clearly unconstitutional. It's clearly unconstitutional. So, and I want to make reference in particular to the various judgments, in particular the Shumba judgment that took away the right of diasporians uh, to vote, that that uh, judgment restricts 
the enjoyment of the right codified in Section 67 uh, to location. Uh, but the Constitution, when it grants the rights to citizens in Chapter 3 and in Section 67, Chapter 4, the Bill of Rights is not located, is not restricted uh, to, 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 to location, uh, to residence. If you are a citizen, you are a citizen. And your citizenship doesn't end whether you are in Burkina Faso, whether you are in, in, in America, and so forth. And one of the things that the Constitution did, because the, the, what, what the founders of the, of the, of the Constitution did, uh, and I'm going to come to this uh, in, in a while, they knew that there were already millions of Zimbabweans abroad. They knew that. So what did they do? They allowed Zimbabweans to have not just the dual citizenship, but multiple citizenship. Um, Washington, can you still hear the VP? Yes, I can hear you. It's loud and clear. Yeah, it's audible. C can I continue? Yes, please continue. Thank you, thank you. Uh, thank you. So, so if you look at Chapter 3, one of the things which we did, and we fought, uh, I was one of the negotiators, as you know, of, uh, of, um, of MDCT led by, by, by President Morgan Shangirai. The issue of uh, citizenship was one of the hotly contested seats on the negotiating uh, uh, table. And we fought to include the right of not just dual citizenship, but multiple citizenship. So a Zimbabwean by birth, a Zimbabwean by acquisition can actually have a multiple uh, citizenship. And also because we knew that the diaspora community was having children, we also expanded the right to claim a natural citizenship to include grand, grand, grandchildren. As long as one of your one of your ancestors was born in Zimbabwe, you can claim direct ascendance to direct uh, citizenship. We also expanded the definition of accusatory uh, citizenship, which is why immigrant uh, Zimbabweans who came from Mozambique, who came from Malawi, who came from the Sadiq region, also have direct uh, citizenship. What does this mean? What it means is that the constitution is a generous definition of a citizen. The constitution is generous rights granted to every citizen. Chapter 4 of our Bill of Rights is, is a, 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 you know, is probably the most important uh, section of the Constitution. It affords so many rights to citizens which did not exist before. They include the right to freedom of movement, freedom of conscience, freedom of, exp uh, you know, expression, the right to labor, a, a criminal rights, the, ra the right to land, the right to, uh, uh, you know, you know, property, the right of children codified in Section 1, the right to health, uh, uh, codified in, in, in Section 76, the right to clean water and a clean environment, uh, Section 74, the right to education, uh, the, you know, socioeconomic uh, uh, rights, the rights of all veterans, the rights of women, the rights of uh, uh, the elder, uh, the right to, 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 to shelter. Uh, these, are, these, are, these are serious rights and they are given to, 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 to citizens. So I would like to submit that and yeah, allow me to, to go a little bit deep into philosophy or, or, or jurisprudence. I would like to submit that any interpretation of the law that takes away rights of citizens is clearly unconstitutional, particularly that one that is based uh, on location, one that is based on, uh, on, uh, on, uh, on, on, on residence. And I want to say something, and this is deep, uh, uh, this is deep. Uh, if there are lawyers that are listening, they will uh, understand. A constitution is made by the people by the people. And the Zimbabwean constitution of 2013 was made by the people and subjected to a referendum. So, so we, when the people uh, make and exercise the right to make a constitution, it's called primary constituent power. They've got primary constituent power. They're exercising primary constituent power. In other words, the right, the absolute right uh, of a citizen to create a social contract, to create a new rules of engagement, to create a new agreement between them and power. So citizens have got the primary constituent the power. Parliament now is given power to amend the constitution. But the power of parliament is just delegated. So parliament exercises what is called secondary, secondary uh, constituent power. Primary constituent power residing in the people. Now, secondary constituent power an interpretive constituent power. Judges hold what is called interpretive constituent power because all they do is to interpret. So secondary constituent power and the interpretive constituent power are all subordinate to primary constituent power. And primary constituent power, which is the citizen in their constitution, determined and demanded a liberal definition of a citizen and two, a generous provision of rights to that citizen. So neither parliament 
uh, no law. The courts, who exercise interpretive uh, uh, powers, can take away the rights of a citizen by interpreting those rights very restrictively, which regrettably has been the position uh, at the present uh, moment. Now, if there is no legal case, and I've been making a legal case that there has to be a right to vote and many other rights, and I'm going to come to them, surely your contributions now demand that you have a seat uh, on the table. The diaspora contributions are a tax. Some of you might say, but VP, that doesn't make sense because there's nothing that obliges you to send 500 pounds to your aunt in Bindura, 200 US dollars for school fees, your nephew in Dangamvura in Mutari, uh, or, 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 or $400 to your uncle in Nyamantlov. That, that, that may be so. There is no, uh, there's no uh, de jure uh, law to that effect. But the fact of the matter is that there is a de facto obligation. There is a de facto obligation, which is why economists refer to diaspora remittances as great tax. The African, like you and me, is a social being that is social responsibilities. These responsibilities are reciprocal. Some of you are in overseas probably because an aunt or an uncle happened to pay a ticket for you. Some of you are in the diaspora and many of you are in the diaspora because an uncle invited you. An uncle was waiting for you at the airport when you landed uh, from Arari, when you landed from, from Ulawayo. Some of you went through uh, funny places to get to the diaspora. Some of you went through Malawi. Some of you went through Dubai. Some of you went to, through Australia. So the fact of the matter, you are there because of a social connection because of Ubuntu. You are who? Because of I. And I am I because of, of, of you. So that necessarily means that the extended family is an integral part of us. The extended family is an inextricable uh, part of us. Now, why have diaspora remittances increased? Diaspora remittances have increased because Mr. Mnangago and ZANU-PF have failed and failed in absolute terms. The state has literally and virtually collapsed. The citizen is left on her own. The citizen is left on his own to fend for his for himself. There are drugs in hospital. The, the children have not gone, even up to now, today is the 28th of January, children have not gone back to school. So the diaspora now must fill the gap. You must provide rent for your relatives. You must provide school fees for your relatives. You must provide money to buy drugs. I've got a Sekuru a, who, 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 who has got COVID. He was afflicted by COVID. His land is about, is about eight or something. Uh, we now have to buy him oxygen literally every two days. He goes through a 10 kilogram uh, tank. There are many Zimbabweans uh, in that, uh, in that uh, uh, you know, position. Uh, this platform is a platform for our political party. We've just formed a party only four days ago uh, on the 24th of, uh, uh, on the 24th of January uh, in the year of our Lord 2022. We, we have nothing, we have no head office, we have no computers, we have no vehicle, we have no, uh, we have no, uh, 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 you, know, you know, decently paid staff and so forth. You are interested in change and you know that this is the only vehicle. So already that is a tax because we are going to ask you to contribute. But even without asking you, you already know the imperator of contributing. So that is a tax. That is a tax. And by the way, the 1.4 billion US dollar remittances is, is actually understated. The 1.4 billion dollars is measured in direct transfers that you make to people uh, who, who require uh, assistance and so forth. And we've got so many of them. By the way, 79% uh, of our population is living in extreme poverty. The World Bank will tell you 50%. Trust me, it's 79%. So we've got 79% of the Zimbabwean population live in extreme poverty. And extreme poverty is an income of U less U US dollar 20 cents a day. I'm spending a lot of time in the village these days. And trust me, there's no one who earns US one dollar 20 uh, cents a, a day. So one dollar 50 cents a day. So people are living in extreme poverty. In townships such as the uh, such as the uh, Mbari, uh, Makokova, and so forth, people are surviving on what is called town. A town is a situation where you, you buy four leaves of, 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 of uh, vegetable. You literally buy a cock of, of, of cooking fat. And then you've got a small uh, endero, a, you know, a small plate of, of, of rice. I mentioned rice because rice is actually cheaper uh, than wolf food, than mill meal, meal. So people are surviving on town. On, 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 on so you guys in the diaspora know that. You, you, you talk to your aunts, you talk to your, to your brothers, 
there are some of your relatives that you actually block because when you see Tete Anna Foni, you know Tete Anna wants uh, something. When you see Bamling John Foni, you know Bamling John uh, wants something. And, and so you, 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 when, when you, when you depart from that phone call, your head is aching because the demands we make from you at home are endless. We want this and we want this. And also we at home, we are not kind on you. We're not kind on you because we think you, you make millions of dollars. And we also forget that you also have your own responsibilities. You've got your own children. You've got your own your your, your, your rents or mortgages and, and so forth. So forth. And at home, we, we don't forgive you. We, we don't forgive you at all. We don't give you time off. And part of the problem is some of you, we send you to school. So if I send you to school, I say, ah, my daughter is in London. My uncle is in is, is in, in America. My uncle is in Jobek, Jobek, County. Surely she must send me uh, some money. So we are not uh, kind to you. Hence, this massive increase in remittance, it is a tax. And if it is a tax, surely you also ought to be on the top of the table. You can't be hiding underneath. As I said, there can't be any representation without a... Uh, uh, there can't be any, any taxation without any uh, any uh, any representation. Uh, you, you have to be on the on the on the on the, uh, on, the on the on the on the table. So diaspora remittance is therefore, you see, the way a state works, a state is a relationship between the citizens, amongst themselves, and more particularly, it's a social contract, a contract between the citizen and the power. So this relationship is mutual, theoretical in normal countries like countries that most of you are. It's a self-reinforcing relationship. It's a mutually benefiting uh, uh, relationship, but it creates a reciprocal obligations. So the citizen will pay tax to the government and he's got an obligation. The citizen will render himself available in an army. Our constitution makes it clear if there's a war and so forth. The citizen renders services to the state. He works for the government. She works for the government. So those are the obligations on the citizen. Those are the obligations of the citizen. So being a patriotic citizen doesn't mean supporting ZANU PF. Being a patriotic citizen means upholding your end of the stick as a citizen, paying taxes in particular, doing civic duties in, 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 in particular. That's your obligation. That's your obligation. But what are the reciprocal obligation on the state? The reciprocal obligation on the state is number one, to protect the territorial sovereignty and integrity of the of the country. So yes, we need an army to protect our 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 our, our borders and to protect our safety as citizens against invading and marauding armies. Nowadays, it's now academic. We don't have wars anymore. But but uh, you know you know you know you know you know when 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 mankind is formed, wars are, are natural. Wars are, are, are a consequence uh, of uh, uh, the social contract. Number two. It is to provide an environment when the where the citizen can flourish. So the state must establish hospitals through the taxes that we pay. The state must establish clinics, schools, universities. The state must provide uh, roads and infrastructure. It must provide clean uh, water and so forth. So both of us must play our part. The citizen plays this part and the government plays this part. So this is what is called reciprocal obligations. And when you have got reciprocal obligations, the state is accountable to citizens. The state is accountable to citizens. The state must deliver on all these things, the social agenda, the economic agenda, and indeed the moral agenda, the human rights agenda. The state must deliver that. If the state doesn't deliver, the citizen waits for five years and holds the state to account by changing the government, by putting it out. Now, the problem with Zimbabwe is that you have a renegade state. You have a bandit state. You have a rogue state that is not accountable. And the key instrument of accountability is dysfunctional, which is elections. They are captured. They are emasculated. They are, they are, they are, they are diverted and so forth. You have a situation where the electorate matters than the electorate. That's why we are demanding uh, changes. President Chamisa will be speaking about this uh, very soon in the next few, in the next uh, few days. Now, where this, where the, where the seat of power is not accountable to the citizen, and there is a broken down of this reciprocal uh, relationship that constitutes the modern, uh, modern state. There is a broken down of this social contract, and that is the problem with Africa. That is the problem with Africa. The problem with Africa is that it's a one-sided agreement. The citizen plays his part of the bargain. The citizen upholds her part of the bargain. He pays taxes. She pays taxes. She goes to work and so forth. But the state is indifferent. The state turns the, the other, other way. There, there's no clean water. There is no electricity that functions. 
uh, the electoral system doesn't deliver. Uh, rights are squandered. Human rights are squandered. So you have a situation where there's a total emasculation uh, of, 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 of human rights. Political activists are in prison. Political activists have disappeared. The media is not free. There's one broadcasting house that spouts the uh, propaganda every single day. You find this situation in Zimbabwe. You find this situation before Ijilema in Zambia under Edgar Lungu. You find this uh, situation in the Democratic Republic of Congo. I don't know why they call it Democratic and Republic, because it's neither of the above. You find this in Congo Brazzaville. You find this in the Central Africa Republic. You find this uh, in, in Gabon where Odimba, the father, ran the country for 42 years. Now Odimba, the son, even though he's, he's paralyzed, he wants to go on forever. You find this in Togo, where uh, Nansime Eyadema was the lo Africa's longest serving head of state for 43 years. Now his son is taken over, and he took over at the, at the age of 39. He could be there longer than his, uh, his, 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 his father. You find this problem in Mali. You find this problem in Burkina Faso. You find this problem uh, in, in Cote d'Ivoire, notwithstanding the promising start, the promising start of our friend uh, Alessandra uh, you know, Watara, so it, it becomes a disease. I can go on and on in each and every uh, uh, you know country, Djibouti, uh, Somalia. Uh, it, 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 it's crazy. It, it's really crazy. Uh, the uh, Frelimo in Mozambique, uh, the NPL in, 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 in Angola. You have got a broken down uh, social contract. The citizen upholds his part of the bargain, but the state does not hold its part of the bargain, which is why political change becomes so important, why supporting the yellow movement, the yellow revolution becomes so important, which is why helping them Komana becomes so important, because that offers us, the citizens, to reset the battle, to, to, to recalibrate the framework of engagement by having a government that recognizes that we are people for a change. If the Zimbabwean government recognized that diasporans were, 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 were people, number one, they would offer them a right to a right to vote. Number two, they would have allowed the diasporans to be economic players in our country. There will be special contracts, there will be special concessions reserved for the for the diaspora. Uh, particularly now where we have got a dual citizenship. Uh, James Manika, uh, my friend, I went to university with him, has just been appointed the vice president of Google. He can offer his service and come, have a little shop in, uh, in, in, in Harare, a little technology company, hopefully in Dotito, where I come from, or in Dai, uh, 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 you know. It, and, and these people can play a role. There are so many of you. Sharp, sharp Zimbabwe. You, I travel extensively, but the last two years will just kept me inside. You will never go anywhere in the world where you won't find, come across a Zimbabwe doing an amazing job in an unbelievable uh, uh, place, uh, in an unbelievable place, thanks to education, thanks to the education that uh, we got through uh, our parents paying, uh, 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 you know, uh, for it. So it's not just the, you giving remittances. There must be something we must give you back. There must be something that Zimbabwe must give you back. So number one, as I said, right to education. Number two, the right to participate in the economy of the country. Number three, the right to participate in the politics of the country, not just by being voters but also being candidates. Uh, in our party, we have a few, but there are just a few. We have, a, uh, we have young Kaston Mateo in, 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 in Marondera, uh, and I'm, I have no doubt he will win in this uh, by-election. Because you're not giving money to the government, you're giving to your relative. But indirectly, you're giving to the government. Because when you send 500 US dollars to your Aunt Mavis, uh, who is in Kambozuma, he's going to spend it in a supermarket and pay VAT. So you're paying taxes. You're paying taxes. So, 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 but unfortunately, you can't withdraw. So the only leverage you can have is to help create the sustainable political environment. And this is done, of course, through uh, supporting uh, President Chamisa and uh, the Citizens Coalition uh, for Change, supporting the activities of other citizens. There are citizens that are engaged in fantastic uh, uh, human rights work, uh, organizations such as the Zimbabwe Lawyers for Human Rights, organizations such as uh, Zim Rights, organizations such as the uh, NGO Human Rights Forum. Many of you used to work for these organizations anyway. Women's movements, child rights, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know movements. In other words, play a conscious part. Play a conscious, you know, you know, a, a conscious uh, a, a, a path. So, so let me conclude by saying. Let me conclude by saying that uh, the biggest challenge we have in Zimbabwe is that of a skewered state. A skewered state in respect of which the social contract is broken down 
and it's one-sided. There are no reciprocal obligations. While the citizen is upholding his or her own part of the bargain, the rogue Munangagwa regime is not doing that. To, to resolve this immediately, we must resolve the political question. So the political question is the biggest fight we are facing in Zimbabwe because resolving the political question is a precondition to recalibrating the social contract so that the social contract becomes a contract. Uh, uh, so that's, 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 that's number one. When we get our politics right, it means we are able to, uh, to, to look after some things that are equally as important in safeguarding the citizen. What are those? It's institutions. We need strong, credible institutions. We need a judiciary that is free, that is not captured. In my life as a lawyer, I don't think I've come across a judiciary that is more captured than the current, uh, than the current, uh, uh, you know, you know, you know, judiciary. I know they will try to bring contempt charges against me, but I'm prepared to repeat this and provide evidence. Uh, Mugabe uh, did some capture, but it's nothing compared present capture of the judiciary, uh, which is a which is a shame, uh, an absolute uh, shame. Number two. As part of strong institutions, we need strong uh, labor movements. The Zimbabwe Congress of Trade Unions must regain its old glory. But how can it regain its old glory when its constituency, uh, the working class, have lost their jobs and we have less than 8% of our people employed in the formal sector? That means that the ZCT has lost over 70% uh, of contributions, subscriptions that it used to receive uh, from uh, workers. Which points to one fundamental thing, which uh, uh, my friends and I have pointed out in our book, Democracy Works, that democracy can only function if there is also a functional, uh, you know, you know, economy. Uh, so strong labor unions, strong employers' organizations, strong churches, strong civic organizations. These are very key. A, a strong media, a strong plural media, is very key. Forty-three years after independence, we have one broadcasting house, the Zimbabwe Broadcasting uh, House. That's that's crazy. Go to countries like Kenya, go to countries like Tanzania. And these are not very democratic places, by the way. They've got several, multiple uh, independent uh, broadcasting houses. They've got hundreds of newspapers. Tanzania, for instance, has got so many uh, newspapers in Swahili, in English. The same applies to, to, to Kenya. The same applies to, Tanz to, 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 uh, to, to, to Uganda. Notwithstanding that you've got the dictator, uh, Yoweri uh, Kaguta uh, uh, Museveni. So Zimbabwe is... is uh, is, is the remaining uh, epicenter of toxicity, you know, caught up in a in a in a in a in a in a, in a time warp. In a time warp, uh, we, we we need strong institutions, including a strong media. We need a strong constitution, a permanent constitution. Uh, with Mugabe, our constitution was lacerated over twenty times. With Amazon, even though there have been two amendments, those two amendments are so vast they exceed uh, forty uh, amendments, and they've uh, they've assaulted the basic foundation of our constitution. The basic foundation of the original constitution was that power would not be bestowed to one individual. Now Amazon is 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 uh, regained that through constitutional amendment number one, number two. He now appoints judges. The constitution is taken away that from the from the from the president. He appoints the prosecutor general. The constitution is taken out that uh, from the president. He is the configuration of, of of devolution by taking away members of parliament from the uh, from the uh, provincial councils he has removed the running mates provision yet we put the running mates provision we just killed this yet we put the running mates provision in order to deal with the uncertainty of succession caused by uh, caused by uh, robert mugabe uh, who wanted to live for, for forever so we're trying to address a mischief uh, that can be, uh, 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 you know, you know, good enough. So the constitution is important. Uh, uh, institutions uh, 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 are, 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 are important. A free environment is important. Uh, you know, you know, I've, I've, I've never mentioned this. I've never written about this. What do I mean by a free environment? I just mean a tolerant, inclusive society. You, you just do your thing as a, as a, as a, as a society. I've, I've lived in some of the countries uh, that some of you are. In, in Europe, in America, and so forth, uh, you know, you 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 can meet the 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 country prime minister without knowing that he, in Zimbabwe the motorcade is from here to 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 Mashingo, four hundred kilometers long. You feel power, they and they make you uh, feel it. They remind you about power. That's abuse. The average citizen is not concerned about politics. The average citizen just wants to see his children uh, grow up. 
you take your your wife for to, to you know for dinner your partner for dinner you save money you go on holiday you look after your relatives and then you wait to to to, to die in the decay that's the average citizen but in zimbabwe we've all been forced to become activists because the system gets to you it gets into your kitchen it gets into your bedroom it gets into your church look at the divisions in the church created caused by this uh, a regime. I'm a member of the Anglican uh, Church. For four years, we're fighting an aberration, a monster called uh, Kununga, until we got our church. There's a fight in the AFM. There's a fight in these football clubs. The football clubs are captured. They want dynamos. They want islanders and so forth. So so you can't escape the ugly fingerprints of, of ZANU-PF. You can't escape the ugly fingerprints of a state state. I think that is not good enough. We just want freedom. We just want to be free. Uh, free to carry out uh, our, 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 our functions, free to assert uh, our rights. So these things are important. These things are important, which is why yeah, I said the other night talking to Wopwell that uh, what we seek to achieve through the Citizens Coalition for Change is a radical departure. And the reason why our slogan is Shandu Ko Zimbabwe is no longer about change. It's about transforming Zimbabwe, the way we think, the way we breathe, the way we do other things, the way we pray. We have to change everything because 43 years of Robert of, of Emerson Mnangagwa has destroyed our value system. I know one or two things about the economics. And I can assure you, ladies and gentlemen, that we can turn around this economy in six months. But what is going to be hard to turn around is the mindset of the people, Ubuntu, uh, of, 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 of the people. We've been de uh, 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 you know, you know, We now have a totally wrong value system, uh, thanks to, 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 to ZANU-PF. So the task is huge. The task it begins now, but the task lies uh, with every citizen, particularly uh, you in the diaspora. Uh, you can do certain things uh, that we can't do in the sense that you don't suffer, which we suffer. We suffer from day-to-day -day abuse. Electricity is gone. Uh, there's, no, there's no diesel in the generator. There are no drugs in the thing. We, in other words, we suffer from the best end of a debased failed state. Some of you at least are in 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 uh, in um, a decent functional states, so you have got a, a better breathing space uh, than what we have. But I have no doubt that we will get there, and I have no doubt that change and transformation is around uh, the corner. We must uh, keep uh, the faith. Uh, this vehicle that we have created, the Citizens Coalition for Change, is the vehicle that will deliver us uh, to a new uh, Zimbabwe. Uh, I thank you very much, and I will stop here for now. Thank you so much, um, Honourable um, Vice President Viti, um, for your for your kind um, uh, words um, and very very um, informative. I think one of the things I I usually say is that the Zimbabwean government only recognizes. Um, the diaspora when it comes to remittances and i just wanted to back your notion um the point that you put across that yes um remittances are actually increasing so if you check in 2020 um uh, i think in, in in 2020 we had um 1.002 billion and then prior to that year it was 647 million and then 2021 um with the recent survey um shows that it's about 1.4 billion so if you actually make like a proper calculation, it will probably increase by 40 percent, right, um, from from previous um, from the prior years. So it is true that um, it is increasing, and that's mostly attributed to the failures of the system. So thank you so much. Um, and if anybody wants to verify that, they're welcome to just um, look around that data. But that's that's how it's going. So yeah, it's 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 really impacting um, citizens, especially when they don't have rights. But um, at this particular point, let me ask um, Dr. Adiendere um, to come through if she has any contribution or any questions she'd like to um, ask um, the Vice President, and then I will be accepting questions. Um, so please do request, um, and then we can try to take it from there. Just a story before the, the doctor comes in. Um, thank you, Honorable. Um, I just wanted to um, ask all our listeners and viewers, uh, to those that have just joined in, if you could retweet our, our, our message so many people can also come in and join. I think there's a, about over a thousand of us. If we can also retweet and uh, make sure that others who have not seen this message can, can join and come and um, join us in this conversation. Secondly, um, 
resource mobilization is the area that we are looking at. We've got a link there for those who would like to uh, make any uh, contribution monetary-wise, please. We've got a link there. You can either use um, PayPal or you can use your um, bank, whether it's Visa, MasterCard, you name it. Um, we've got sections there that you can choose from. Um, Akorokoto, some of the fundraising that we are doing for the elections and the printer that we're also looking at uh, purchasing. Secondly, we also looking for your skills. We need your skills. We need you to work with us to make sure you donate your skills. And from that, we also then going to some things that will also help us in elections. Um, things like phones, tablets, laptops, computers, houses, cars, you name it. I don't want to dilute this um, <clears throat> conversation, but I just thought I would let those that have just come in aware of what's going on. Um, Dr. Lendere, you can tell me to you. Dr. Chipwa, please do you come in. Oh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, thank you for your presentation. This was very helpful. My first question for the new political party is what are the structures that you've put in place to actually support diaspora vote mobilization? So we know that for years there have been a lot of... Uh, people that put in, you know, cases with the court to support the diaspora vote. And those have had strong pushback. Historically, the MTC was on the fence. Uh, and I know this because I studied this. But I think it would be very helpful to have a clear message on what positions CCC is going to take to support the diaspora vote. Now, people in the diaspora can mobilize. They can do a variety of things. But I think ultimately the win will have to come from the courts locally. And that has to be led by political parties. We have evidence from Kenya on this. We have evidence recently from the Nigerian diaspora trying to agitate for this as well. So there are different places where we can pull this from. Um, the second thing is it would be really good for CCC going forward to have a strong uh, presence in the diaspora through the political parties. We've already seen people hosting spaces, which is good, such as the space by the diaspora leadership. But one of the questions that people were asking me is, can we see on the site a list of the various um, sub, you know, committees in different countries? So listed somewhere in on the website, whom do people contact if they have questions, if they want to join? Um, and then finally, we are making all of these, these donations on PayPal. Um, and I've done this. I have encouraged my friends to sign up for a small monthly donation. I find that easier so you don't have to think about it. You can do that on PayPal. You just select, you know, I'm going to give $10 every month or $20 every month. And then you uh, forget it. It's, it's out of your mind. It's just your Starbucks money or, you know, something small. While we're doing this, though, I keep going back to the Party Finance Act which is very clear, at least in, in writing, that people donating the money have to be domiciled in the country. And you're the lawyer, so I'm hoping that you might explain a little bit about that legalese. Because what we don't want is for millions of dollars to have been donated. And I'm, you know, I'm not saying millions have been donated today. I'm sort of just speaking it into existence. But my concern is that you have $5 million that's been donated. And then the law will be clear that that money cannot be repatriated to CCC. So maybe this is not something that you can speak on publicly, you know, for confidentiality or other things. But I, I do think it's important and we would do a disservice, at least those of us who read on these things, if we didn't bring that up as, as something to think about. Um, thanks, Jessica. Thank you so much, Dr. Lendere. I'm going to uh, allow um, Honourable President to answer that, and then I will start to take questions from uh, other people. And then, um, VP, if you can also just let us know the time that you might have for questions, it would be great um, so that we can try and manage that. Please go ahead. Um, VP, you can go ahead. Thank <laughs> you. 
uh, action includes uh, lobbying, action includes uh, uh, street action, because the, the, the Constitution allows us to peacefully demonstrate in Section uh, 59. Action includes uh, the right to petition. Action in includes advocates in Zimbabwe, uh, outside uh, Zimbabwe. So there are a lot of things that... Uh, uh, that we can we can, we can do uh, to, to together as as citizens, and I think let's 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 do that. Uh, I would love to see as uh, you know uh, you know the formation of a of a of a of a committee, or just on the right of the diaspora to to uh, to, to vote, which will consist of of people in the diaspora, uh, people uh, back at home, uh, uh, experts in the diaspora, experts at, 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 at home. We go back to the constitutional court again. We go to the African Commission on Human Rights. We go to the, to the UN because it's a universal uh, right. And Zimbabwe is one of the few countries in sub-Saharan Africa that doesn't allow the diaspora to vote. Mozambique allows diaspora to vote. Botswana allows diaspora to vote. Uh, 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 South Africa allows diaspora to vote. If the argument is that uh, is in that judgment, that uh, citizens have uh, need to, to be registered in, to, to a constituency, each person in the diaspora came from a certain constituency. So register that constituency. In any event, in any event, we can do away with the constituents voting. And there's one constituent where everyone is a constituent. That is the presidential vote. So if that is their argument, the presidential vote doesn't require a, a, you know, a residence. So these are just the excuses. So I think let's let's have synergies. Let's 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 work together. The same applies to the issue of, of, of structures and, and, and so forth. I think I think we are trying to, to get every citizen involved. Uh, I, I mentioned this the other day when I was talking to, to Opel, that part of the problem of the old MGC was the metam metamorphization from a mass movement into a political party. And the political party is good gatekeepers. A political party is, un is unbreakable. It's like a private club. You can't go to a private club, they'll tell you we are members only, and you can only join in uh, if you pay $5,000 or whatever. Uh, uh, now we want to change gears and, uh, to, the, to the people. So, so I think there's going to be there's going to be a reconfiguration of what we call structures. Uh, uh, our organizer uh, Amos Ibaya will, will provide uh, more, uh, more, uh, more, 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 more details. So to to answer you, uh, uh, Chipo, let's have a sy symbiotic, uh, two way uh, relationship. Uh, let's 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 work together because the fact that we are warm doesn't mean that we've got better ideas. We certainly don't have better ideas. And remember, we're five IT. This one has been arrested. This one is in Botswana, in the United Kingdom, in the European Union, in China, and 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 and, and, and so forth. So let's get that. Let's develop all this. As far as the, the political financing, look, that is the list of our of our of our worries. And I can't I can't give a full answer on a platform like this where Emerson Nangagwa probably has five people are listening. The 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 political finance act is adequate. It it doesn't know go funds. It doesn't know modern technology. It doesn't know electronic transfers. Uh, so you know. So it, it speaks of it speaks of physical boundaries. When these platforms you have no physical boundary, you know. So I, I don't want to go into detail, but I know that you are intelligent enough to know what I'm saying. So legal formalities should not worry you, particularly from a regime that is receiving millions from uh, uh, China, millions uh, from shady uh, characters uh, scattered across the, uh, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know the world. Uh, so I, I think that uh, uh, you guys shouldn't be worried about that. The, the legal formalities are the least of our challenges. Uh, money can be sent. Money has been sent. Resources will be sent. That is the easiest of our, of, our, of our challenges. And remember, in so many of the situations, we actually don't want cash. We actually don't want cash. We, we, we want, uh, uh, you know, 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 items. Uh, so if uh, someone is going to decide to donate uh, uh, 4,000 yellow T-shirts, they're not, they're not coming to CCC. They're going to your cousin in Tito, who is going to then uh, look for a child on Monday. So why should that be a problem? Now I'm letting out a lot of things. But what I'm saying is that let's not worry about legal formalities. You have been doing it uh, and, and I don't have to educate you. Let's not worry about a, an antiquated, clearly unconstitutional, uh, paranoid piece of legislation called the Political uh, Finance Act. I thank you. Can I have more questions? Thank you. Thank you, Honorable. Um, <clears throat> I think the next person uh, could be Sula, Sulaiman. Then followed by Love More and uh, T. Charla 17. Thank you. 
Sorry, Jessica. Go ahead, Sissy. Can we ask how much time the VP has so that we can try and manage what, what time is it now? It's eight past. Eight past eight. So is is eight thirty two little. Let's do it to eight thirty and see. I think we can so thirty more minutes. Let's go. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, colleagues. Thank you, VP. I I I I think Doctor has said something that is already alluded to the point that I want to speak to, but I just want to elaborate a bit to say, we, we, we have realized, I think, uh, Jessica, you have pointed out a number of some other things that are also critical to the fact that uh, the diaspora is contributing a lot to Zimbabwe. As such, I want to think that uh, it is also played out in, our, in, the, in, the, in the party that the diaspora are always are also trying to give in to the party a lot. But what I think is lacking is the fact that uh, uh, the leadership must, uh, I think, knowing very well that the other parties and oh, they've got finances from the government and we know it all. So I would think that the leadership would be dispatched out in the diaspora everywhere because people are willing to help out. People are willing to, to, to fork out their money, even to help with accommodation and everything else. But what is very important is for you to be seen around and talk to people around. Some people are, you know, Zimbabwe, but you are so, you are concerned with us. I think that is my point number one. Number two, maybe it is very important to have a leadership in Zimbabwe. The diaspora. That's the point. I to Dr. Involved my members are a diaspora. No one one representative from each and every country. As you know, you are not going to be remote, you don't have to be physically in Zimbabwe, but at least those people to coordinate a uh, leadership because you know, the diaspora sometimes we are a bit detached. The leadership, I know you cautious, I can't even have a cautious amount of vision, but physically, you know. So, I think maybe if there are means. To, to bring about cohesion and having diaspora people involved physically, not only in this monetary. I thank you. I thank you. Thank you. I think we get to the next one. Uh, it was Love More. Love More, can we try and do two minutes at the maximum, please? We do not have much time. Thank you. Thanks, fellow citizen. I'd like to ask uh, uh, the, the VP. We know that uh, ZEC is uh, compromised, highly compromised. And uh, if it is to go into elections with in this current state, we're going to have a compromise result. Are there any plans around having maybe some V12 of some sort where before the election results are counted, they are tallied and uh, the tallying is then publicly displayed so that we know exactly what we are expecting per, per, per polling station? Because the issue of ballot stuffing, if it's not managed carefully, we're going to have another issue that really needs to be solved. And I think the, the, the time is now for us to define that. That's my contribution. Thank you. Uh, T. Shala, one seven, please. Uh, thank you for this wonderful opportunity to speak on this platform. Um, it's, uh, it's a young man in the diaspora. It's uh, it's 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 always um, like it's just a like. There's no time to be a life like right now in terms of change that's happening, and I feel like this movement uh, is going in the right direction. So. My question is loosely based on um, uh, what Tendai, the, the previous speaker, just asked. But, like, um, Vice President, my question is, uh, as we, if we look at uh, Zimbabwe's political situation based on, on the scope of history, we know that history tends to repeat itself. So my question is, like, with the CCC, are there any countermeasures in place? You don't have to say them. But like, are there any countermeasures in place? Because like, you know, politics is war, and you have to, uh, you know, your opponent that you're going to war with, and you have to have strategies in place, uh, to counteract uh certain ways the opponent or your enemy might, uh, move on you. So, uh, we know we all know that the ZTC in the previous elections, uh, they were compromised. So my question is, uh, in the event that they're compromised, what uh, like what are some of the strategies that we can remain hopeful and we can depend on to know that you know these elections are not just going to go down the drain after a massive effort from people from the diaspora and people in Zimbabwe to get 
what we want and so that we can all remain, still have hope in a brighter future for Zimbabwe. Thank you. Thank you. Over to you, VP. Well, thank you very much. I think that... Um, uh, let me start with the issues around uh, the, the first speaker. I think the... I, I hear him when he says that um, the leadership uh, must... Uh, uh, you know, respect the diaspora paying a visit. That I appreciate. Uh, that is important, and I think we are going to see uh, what we will do in the next uh, in the next uh, few months. Uh, I know that uh, it always uh, is exciting when you have someone from home uh, talking to you, uh, discussing with you, socializing with you. You go for dinners and so forth. I remember the last time I came with the president in uh, uh, in Washington D.C. Uh, in October uh, of of uh, actually it was December of twenty uh, of twenty seventeen, uh, 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 Chief Soshe hosted us uh, at some dinner in uh, in 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 Washington DC. I, I won't tell you what happened. And then we, the last time we were in the UK, May uh, twenty eighteen, uh, we came with the president. Uh, he had a speaking arrangement at uh, Oxford University. Then he had uh, that interview, it had talk again. The interactions uh, were just amazing. So we'll see what we will uh, do, uh, and more so because in the last two years we have not traveled uh, due to COVID. Uh, so that is very important. Uh, we'll, we'll try to do that. Um, the other comments are basically comments, suggestions, and I think that's the thing that we, we would like to, to hear. What, what do you think? Uh, what do you think? How can we improve? How can we be different uh, from? Our is to our uh, existence as MDC Alliance uh, or MDC T. Uh, what are the things we should drop uh, from the old past? What are the things we should we should keep? Uh, what are the things that are disruptive? That's that's the conversations that uh, we would like to 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 hear. Uh, two of you are concerned about elections and the fact that they are not free and fair. Of course, they are not free and fair. Uh, but the truth of the matter, there is no. There is no dictator that is reformed itself out of power. There is, as Lenin used to say, there is no class that commits class suicide. There is no, there is no authority that voluntarily surrenders a power. So we have to be fully aware of that, and we have to be equal to the task. Uh, this means that uh, there are several things that we must do uh, in any election. We must protect the vote. Protect the vote means uh, doing some of the things that uh, you were uh, hinting, a uh, power of voter tabulation. Uh, real-time uh, uh, publication of, uh, of, of, of of results, uh, 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 protecting particularly particularly uh, the presidential vote, which is privatized. Uh, why can't it be? Why can't the result of the presidential election also be publicized uh, outside the polling station the way we do uh, with other uh, you know e e elections? So protecting the vote is going to be a uh, key. Uh, the integrity of the voting material. How I many ballot papers have been printed? Uh, how many polling stations are there? Where is the ink that is going to be used coming from? Where are the pens that are going to be used? Uh, you know, 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 uh, coming from? Are we sure that the polling stations are not just going to sprout uh, from the bush as they normally do uh, during an election? Uh, you know, you know, polling stations get get pregnant and they suddenly deliver in the bush in the middle of nowhere. Some of you remember that video clip uh, that I was involved in in 2013. Where they, in, in, in Mount Pleasant, in broad daylight, they put up a a, a, a fresh a, a, a polling station <coughs> with Zubko buses carrying people that didn't look like uh, Zimbabweans. So that's the integrity of, of voting uh, material. Then, then the security, the voter, is, is so key. The security of the voter is so key. There's going to be violence. There's, there's going to be intimidation. <coughs> there's going to be harvest of fear. How do you protect uh, the vote? How would you protect the outcome? How do we protect the results in in in, in, in Zambia, Lusaka? Uh, President uh, Michael Sata he had youth sleeping on the streets, uh, forcing the MMD government to concede uh, of uh, Rubia Banda. Uh, President H. H. Hichilema also had uh, 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 people sleeping in the streets <coughs> to protect the, uh, uh, the you know the vote. All these things need to be attended. All these things uh, need to be to be attended. And as you can see. They are beyond the political party. They are beyond a political party. They require citizens. That is why we are calling ourselves citizens 
coalition for, for change. A man thing born from last year when we had citizens convergence for change. So all hands on, on, on deck. We can't do it on our own. We, it requires citizens, and every citizen must play his uh, part. If we lose, it's not, it's not the citizens coalition which has lost. It's the people of Zimbabwe. They are the ones who have been denied the opportunity of transformation, the opportunity of opportunities, the opportunity of, 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 of prosperity, the opportunity of a just, equal uh, society where everyone is equal, irrespective of tribe, race, religion, or sex. Those things are important. Let's all play a role. And in the diaspora, find something that find something that you can you can uh, you can play a role because we've got difference in alchemy between the struggle between the movement uh, and between the people of Zimbabwe so 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 that's what that's that, that's the, the, the point of departure the role of citizen uh, I said when I spoke to to to, to, the, to hope the other night that we are taking the citizen from the periphery but it's more than that it is the citizen who must now be in the driving seat it is the citizen who must now be in the driving seat and that is that is so key so I appreciate these these platforms and I, I hope that uh, the, the transformation which we are seeking uh, is not going to be theoretical. We are going to see it in action by you, the citizens. Ching Cheng, Ching Cheng, Chitore, Ching Cheng. Um, uh, Jessica, are you now able to speak? Your network was um, uh, a bit uh, troubling. Uh, so Jessica is having some network challenges. We hope that she'll be able to uh, to speak. Uh, and from what I'm seeing right now, we have uh, a full platform, uh, yet there are still 15 more requests and it's seven minutes left. So <laughs> let's, let's try to be as short as possible. Okay, okay. Yeah. yeah I, think, I think the next person we have um, is Charlton Charles, then Chatibwege. <clears throat> Can you go ahead and try to be as quick as you possibly can, please? Am I speaking first? You are the one on the line, Charles. Okay, okay. thank you so much, Washington. Thank you, host. Thank you, Jessica. Uh, and uh, thank you, VP, for uh, being here with us. Uh, the first question that I had uh, has been uh, uh, put across. That is the one about diaspora votes. Um, however, I'm just going to say um, I think CCC should do all they can to try and get this to, ha to try and get this to happen. Uh, and I'll leave I'll leave that one on there. And my second question is: um, Was anything lost uh, by the CCC after the announcement uh, of the new name, new settings, and everything? In terms of MPs, uh, councillors, or, or or anything, did did lose anything after th that announcement due to the change of name? And uh, lastly, uh, on a lighter note, uh, uh, VP, are you going to make an apology to uh, Monzora and his uh, and uh, and 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 the people that have been sponsoring him uh, for selling them a dummy? Because I'm sure they were waiting for this organization to go to the nomination courts using MDC Alliance. And then they had, I, I'm sure they had all the money uh, to uh, take uh, this, the, this CCC to, to court, thereby delaying, um, the, uh, and as we know, the courts are, 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 are captured. They were going to delay this as much as they can until after the uh, by-elections. But you sold, you, we sold them a dummy. Are you going to uh, uh, apologize to Monzora uh, about this. Thank you. Thank you, my brother Shelton. Thank you. Shakti Bweke, please. Uh, good evening. Um, Mr. VP Amri Krimora Chayo Muri Uji. I've got two, two quick questions, and uh, I don't know if, if I can suggest anything, but we've got issues like uh, that takes that are, will fall us everywhere. Number one is the seat of Harari issue. I feel we are defending that issue, Jagakwana, like uh, the part of seat of Harari, yet we know where all this is coming from. The, the, the country, what's exactly is happening between the government and seat of Harari. 
ni state ya hili right now and the second one is the issue you must sanction you really need to come clean and tell the people what exactly is happening so that one was ziva then we bury these two issues once and for all tonanga watukunanga ccc thank you my brother yes should should i come in yes please yeah so i want to start by the i want to start with the sanctions sanctions is not our language it's the language of zanu pf uh some of you may have watched uh, the my press conference when i dealt with the human rapporteur on the punitive measures uh, that woman who came to zimbabwe please please go and dig it out and uh, and uh, pick it up uh, because i made fundamental points the things that i made fundamental with the following that uh, let's start with the definition zimbabwe trades with everyone it's biggest the trading is actually is actually the western countries the united kingdom uh, the united kingdom it's biggest the eight contributors is 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 united states of america followed by britain followed by uh, the european union so it doesn't fit in the definition of sanctions in the classical sense yes there are travel uh, bans on 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 on, uh, on individual uh, so 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 there we, we need to to be on the same point secondly we in the citizens coalition for change we want any kind of isolation against zimbabwe to be removed to end any kind of restrictions on zimbabwe to to end and by the way i also mentioned in that interview please go and watch it, that economic uh, so measures taken uh, against zimbabwe or zimbabwe institutions because of non compliance with international uh, financial standards are not sanctions so we have got a gatekeeper of finance across the world the swift system is the fatf the financial action task force based in america uh, they follow money they follow money to check money laundering to check arms dealing to check support of terrorism to check a, a dealing in drugs to check a, a, a child a trafficking so if a bank aids and abets any person who is in this category terrorism drugs money laundering uh, children uh, 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 and, 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 and child trafficking, you'll be caught. That's why banks, Zimbabwean banks have been fined. Big banks like H HSBC have been fined. Barclays Bank has been fined. Standard Chartered Bank has been fined. Stanbank has been fined. ANB Ambro has been fined. That has nothing to do with the sanctions. Don't conflate that. So I come back to my point. We want all forms of uh, of of, uh, of restrictions on Zimbabwe to, to end. But the people in Zimbabwe the authorities in Zimbabwe must also realize that they've got reciprocal obligations to the international community. So the international community will look at you with disdain if you are going to be beating up your citizens. If Opeo Chingwono will spend eight months in, in prison, Yang Makombilero Aruzilisha will spend 12 months in prison, Joanna Mamombe, Cecilia Chimbiri, Netsai Marova, where is Parson Zamara right now? So is I is, 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 is talking to you now? The world will react. You still election, then you think people will just watch you out, you know, and, and, and be innocent bystanders. That's not going to happen. You still the way you are doing, you know, diamonds, gold, a, a platinum, a, a chrome concessions, roads, zupcos, and so forth. So put simply, put simply, the owners. Of ending that Zimbabwe is totally re-engaged, lies squarely on Emerson Mnangagwa and uh, ZANU PF and uh, the ZANU PF uh, government. They have to show reasonable doubt that they can be counted as an equal, respectable member of the inner community. And an equal, respectable member of the international community doesn't steal elections, doesn't beat up opposition, doesn't steal the party head office. Of, of, of one party doesn't steal the party name of one party doesn't give five five million dollars to a rogue political uh, uh, you know you know you know you know party doesn't uh, incarcerate its citizens doesn't uh, uh, banditize its citizens doesn't declare war on its uh, citizens doesn't <coughs> have one newspaper one national radio broadcasting 42 years after independence doesn't pe steal people's savings in their accounts people's a, 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 a patience it doesn't wake up one morning and say all oh, the money you had is no longer us dollar in other words 
it lives by the standards of the international uh, community. That's all that is required. Nothing else, nothing more. The onus is on ZANU PF and uh, uh, tachocracy and kakistocracy uh, uh, and, uh, and uh, kleptocracy uh, and uh, violence against your people and chigananda, uh, as I call it, banditry, as I call it. Uh, the second question is uh, the second question is on uh, local authorities, including Sito Farrar. You know, Jacob Mafume, the mayor, has been fired. I don't know how many times. Uh, 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 Councillor Ebed Gomba, the original mayor, was doing a fantastic job. He has been fired. I don't know how many times. Uh, right now, we've got countless by-elections for local authorities in the city of Harare. So Zanupia has crippled these local authorities together with uh, their friend uh, Dundras Mon. You know, it's, it's 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 terrible, but it has happened. It, you have got a, you have got a, a, a government minister, July Tukmoy, one of the worst ministers in the history of uh, a government ministers. And trust me, they've been terrible ones. The Chinamasas of this world, uh, the Tulingubes of this world, terrible ones. But July Moy is in a class of his own, together with his sister uh, Tracy, uh, 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 the minister of 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 of, of, of sports, uh, uh, Tracy Coventry. Sorry, Kesti Coventry. So, 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 so you 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 can't have a, a minister treating elected officials like their employees. You, you cannot have that. You have got Section three hundred forty nine of the Urban Councils Act, and by the way, the Urban Councils Act has not been harmonised to the new constitution. It allows the minister to have the final say on policy uh, matters. You have got a creature called the local government board. The local government board is the final say on who is employed and who is not employed. The other year, the city of Harare wanted to employ a banker. Uh, James Mushore to be the town clerk, and Zanus PF simply uh, uh, blocked uh, that. So we need we need to to harmonize to have a new urban councils act and so forth. So in other words, you have a problem in that the urban councils act, the rural district council act, is an undemocratic piece of legislation that is not designed to ensure that citizens can actually deliver service delivery through their elected uh, representatives. Which is why I said at the beginning. Let's have political change. Let's have political change as a precondition of having strong things in, uh, in, uh, in, in, in America. It doesn't make sense. We are the scatterings of, 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 of the true scatterings of, 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 of Africa. Uh, so it's, it's not good enough. It's not good enough. That's why this movement is so important. That's why the Yellow Revolution is so important because it offers our people uh, the perfect opportunity to do and carry out the revolution uh, that is required. That's why Advocate Chamisa is so important because he is carrying the hopes and aspirations uh, of all of us, uh, you and me. So when we say, Gapi de Hakim Komana, we are in fact saying, Gati Pinde Yedu Wananji, Wanjiku, Vanu, Pov. It is so, so critical that we have change in our country. Thank you, thank you, VP. We're going to ask you for a little bit more time. We've got many people that haven't spoken. Is that um, Washington Ali? Is that Washington Ali? It is yes. I'm only, I'm only, I'm only recognizing your voice now. Yeah, it is me. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> no, I only, it's only now that I'm this voice. I know. Yeah, that's yeah. me. That's me. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, we've got. Um, I've noticed we've got um, the honourable job scholar as well. Um, I don't know what happened, but given my mic and he dropped. Uh, my brother. Um, I'm going to go back to um, my sister, Chip Tando. Um, then uh, we've can we make you the last one, or maybe the, the last, last one. one? Yeah, the last two. Yeah. Okay, we go to Tando and Uncle Zanani. Okay, thank you so much for such a wonderful platform and also giving us an opportunity to actually have a word in because it often feels, as one speaker said, that we're so far away and whenever we contribute, it's almost like. Um, the diasporans are only available when resources are needed, but when it comes to actually contributing meaningfully to the country, then we're not really, ex you know, we're not really wanted. But anyway, I, I just want to say that, you know, the older I get, the more I realize that each generation fights the same battle over and over again. And listening to you, um, Mr. Beatty, talking, it, it, it really fills me with great sadness because there's a, there's a video of Chongo Gara saying exactly that, asking for genes in Sweden. Absolutely. You know, there's a video of Togo saying the exact same words you're saying, okay. saying, give us anything, clothes, the whole lot, so that we can fight our struggle. And I think one of the major things that worries me the most is this is a, a, a systemic issue. 
I don't really think that we've changed the governance structures in the country to make them in such a way that they are genuinely inclusive. I think that we're still governed for the, it's almost like it's consumption for the few at the expense of the many. And it's a structural problem. And I sometimes wonder whether it might not be a revolving door that um, 30 years down the line we'll be having the same story no matter who comes in. And what I just wanted to say is, you know, you know, I respect everything that's going. I was one of the people that was really worried. I actually sent an email to Mr. Magaisa saying the change of name is too late. It's 24 months. I mean, 2023 is just around the corner. Oh my God, how is this going to work out? You know, but it's really um, heartwarming to see the response and everything that is going in. Anyway, but that's what I want to say. But I just want, I just have a few questions. You know, whenever politicians talk of the people, it frightens me. <laughs> but you know, my sort of feeling is. Would it not be wiser if the CCC maybe found just three, three grand policies that it concentrates on, becomes experts in? And then maybe, you know, everything else is solved by generation. One of the major problems we have also in Zim is an issue of succession. This is not a zanu of problem. We see it even in our businesses. We see it in our opposition party. What are some of the things that the, the, the new CCC party is going to do in order to solve one of these, you know, one of the, one of the line up? after Nelson, who's going to come next? We, we really want to have real choice and we really want to discuss issues. I think we know what NPF is doing that's wrong. And I think we can sing it all day. But I think going forward, I think what would be very reassuring to all of us is we now really want to have an actual dialogue in the country. And really, I think some of these things, some of the noise that they create, I think it's now time you guys just ignored it. Because all of us have stopped ignoring it. I don't understand why Fazwa Mayere goes on those interviews with that guy. It's completely unnecessary. All of us are not listening to all that. We want to see what the future is and what our future is going to be like. Because Kuchembe Rab Diaspora, I tell you, is not ideal for a lot of people. And also, a lot of people are facing a lot of challenges with diaspora. And I think we need to start thinking, you know, in the way other people and other communities that I've seen who are here, the way that they think about their home countries. And I think it's really, really important that we do that and that there's a clear structure of doing so. So those are some of the things that I just wanted to ask if, if they can be addressed and maybe we can have another dialogue on these issues um, in the future. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We, we go to the next one, uh, my brother Nkonza. My, my brother Nkonza, can you unmute? Yes, and, yes. Can you hear me? You are clear. We can hear you. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, uh, to the vice president, um, first, I just want to say uh, thank you. Thanks a million and team for, for the name change. We've been waiting, waiting for this moment uh, for a long, long time. Now we can move forward. So they're, they're straight to the straight to the point, straight to the question. So it's a question that I did oppose to some of the members. So I got the answer. But for the benefit of everyone, on the platform, maybe you can shed light on it as well, uh, Mr. Vice President. Um, so we, uh, most of us uh, now truly believe, you know, one million percent that uh, the triple C is going to, you know, uh, represent uh, people that are going to come after us, the next generation and stuff. So with the, with the logo, with the logo, we know that it's got our president for visibility because we're just starting. So people were asking uh, about the, you know, long-term logo that have you got any plans on the table or you've already started working on it or it's already there, the one that doesn't, you know, have uh, the face of our president. So, yeah, that's the question that has been asked by so many people. And I believe some of them are on this platform. So if you can shed light on that, that would be grateful. Thank you. Thank you, my brother. Before the vice president speaks, uh, can I also just advise everyone? I'm, I'm, it has come to my attention that people are having trouble um, putting the money through the link that we've got there. There are some challenges that are there. Um, the person who does our accounts is, is looking into this. Uh, if you can bear with us, we will get resolved. Um, we are also going to pin it on our Twitter handle as well. So if there's anybody who would want to make any donation, please. Um, we will put it on the Twitter handle for people to be able to. Your help is needed. You know, anything that you feel, think you can help with, um, Zimbabwe is yours. And I, I think that we have been given that opportunity. And this is our time to really engage. That's why we are bringing 
our leaders on here so they can have a conversation with us so that we know and see where we are. We are needed to do. Not that A has to do this, a B has to do this. It's you as a person to say, what am I going to do to improve my country? You know, we're talking of voter registration. There's so much that we can do and encourage from diaspora. So I'm going to leave it there. Thank you, VP. Yes, yeah, I think the lady that uh, spoke is uh, has so many ideas, <clears throat> and I hope that uh, we can tap here and possibly put it in one of our thinking, uh, uh, you know, you know, uh, you know, committees. She asked about um, she she asked about uh, you know the issues of uh, succession in the country. She asked about you know you know you know involvement. She, she's got so many ideas. All I need to say is that, uh, as I said, we are, we don't want to be. A, you know, you know, you know, you know, a top-down approach. We want to be a bottom-up. Uh, uh, we want to be a bottom-up uh, approach. Uh, this is a movement. This is a movement. The citizens are in charge. The citizens are in control. Uh, you know, you know, I, I, you know, I'm, 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 I've been away uh, where there was no Wi-Fi. I'm only, I'm only having Wi-Fi now. But the whole of social media is just yellow, yellow. There's not a single person who has been bought by us. There's not been a single person who has been phoned to say put on yellow. Uh, this is a revolution. This is. This is exciting. This is a uh, momentous. Uh, so citizens know what they want. Don't second guess them. Don't prejudge them. This this name you're saying, we thought it was late. It's not late. What did we do in 2018? In 2018, <clears throat> until February, we didn't have a presidential candidate. Uh, Baba Changire passed on on the 14th uh, of February, 2018. Uh, within a few days, we had the advocate Nelson Chamisa. We had just sent a 40, by the way, his birthday. Please remember, it is next week on the 1st of February. Uh, make him happy, please. So, but we mounted an election, even by their own by their own votes, by their own count, with over 2 million votes. Uh, so when an idea is ripe and ready, that idea spreads like nobody's business. If you follow the, if you study the history of the liberation movement, that was nothing. ZANU was absolutely nothing. The party that was known was ZAPO. The leader that was known uh, 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 was not uh, uh, Robert uh, Mugabe. But once history started moving, it moved so quickly. It moved so quickly from 76 to 79. Uh, ZANU became something that became a big factor uh, in the elections of uh, January, sorry, of, of, of uh, February 19, uh, 1980. So the point I'm trying to say is that uh, the, the point I'm trying to say is that sometimes don't, don't complicate issues. Just trust in the people. Trust in the in the processes, uh, trust in the processes. You say, ah, we want uh, you know big ideas. Why does Fadzi does that? It's important to occupy those spaces. Uh, sometimes it's to toxic, but it's important to the, the dictator must be straight. There are four things that you do when you are fighting a dictator. Number one, you protect your zones of autonomy. That's why we are participating in these uh, by-elections. Number two, you build a credible uh, opposition, a credible alternative. That's what we, we you know you know we, we, we are doing. Number three, number number three, you stretch the regime. So if the regime takes you to, to the moon, you fall into the moon. If they go to Earth, you fall into the Earth. If they go to Venus, you go to Venus. If they go to Pluto, you go to Pluto. I don't know the tenth planet I'm told we now have a tenth planet. You follow them to that tenth planet. I would call it Lotito. You follow them to Lotito. So don't don't leave them to occupy spaces. And uh, uh, lastly, be the leader be the leader. They must react. And in the last six months, they've been reacting. They are reacting to yellow. They don't know what to do. They are reacting to our new symbol of one thing and number one, they don't know what to do. They are reacting to slogans. They don't know what to do. And they didn't even know because sellouts have left our party. They didn't even know. Someone said, we must apologize to Douglas because we saw them and done. We knew what we were going to do. We knew what we were going to do. But we kept on saying, we will participate at the MDC Alliance. That's leadership. The opponent must react. The opponent must react. The, the problem with ZANU PF is that it thinks we are dead. We are fools. We are puppets. <laughs> I feel pity for them. I feel pity for them. So, 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 you have faith, but faith without action is nothing. A Christian who just believes that Jesus will come in the second coming, who does nothing, is not a Christian at all. Uh, I'm a member of the Anglican Church. Faith is action. Faith is action. Could change it over times. You know, visit You know, my prisoners could could jail. Train my communities. Train. That's what you must do with regards to this uh, yellow movement. 
you must have faith in action. You must have faith in action. You can't be an innocent bystander and watch us on Twitter, watch us on YouTube, uh, watch us uh, uh, on, 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 on Facebook. What are you doing? We also want to watch you. We want to hear that. Uh, we want to hear that uh, citizens uh, were handing over a petition, uh, making a lot of noise in Strand Street uh, at, the, at, at the Zimbabwean embassy, making a lot of noise in Twani Pretoria. At the, at the, that's what we want to hear. Let us watch you in turn, because we are all citizens. There is no one who is there is no one who, who owns this thing except uh, except uh, yourself. Someone asked us about symbols and so forth. We, we, we put an election symbol with our face, with the face of our president. The reason we did that is that you are fighting with piranhas. Anything else they're going to steal. Anything else they can't, they're going to steal. This name, if, if we had said we're going to do it, they, they were going to take it. In fact, there is a party which they, told, they registered it. They called the Citizen Convergence for Change. Now, we were smarter. We didn't come with Citizen Convergence. We came with Citizen Coalitions for for, 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 for change. So the president's face, they can't do anything to it. They can't, they can't steal it. They can't, they, and they're so ugly, by the way. <laughs> Compare Amazon and our president. So, they, so that, or even Douglas. So, <laughs> so that was the, that is why we did that. Because a, 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 a dramatic circumstances also call for dramatic, uh, a, 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 you know, 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 measures. So we, 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 have invested a lot in the celebral processes, thought leadership, and so forth. But ultimately, ultimately, this is about the people of Zimbabwe. This is about you being part of this uh, agenda. It is your agenda, the agenda for transformation, so that our children can live better lives than we have lived. Many of you are in that diaspora. I know, I know, I know, even if you earn 20,000 pounds a month, you're not happy because it's not warm. It's not warm. Uh, the lady was talking about the diaspora. None of you wants that. I know my family is in the diaspora. They're not happy. They love uh, Zimbabwe. They love Zimbabwe. But circumstances forced them to uh, to be in the diaspora. We've got Vazuguru, uh, you know, you know, overseas. We want to see them. Vazuguru and our nephews, uh, our nieces. So let's 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 give it all. Let's give it all. And change is a reality. HH in Zambia taught us that change uh, is a reality. Change is this is your Buddha TV, Hakudi Masifi, Slay Media TV, and this potent remote sitting as a one and up a